right here the components I'm going to use to build a battery extension for my AC200P. I was looking at the B230s, the B300s, and I'm going to soup this one up a little bit because I am going to add an inverter. It's not just going to be DC. So I can, you know, use it as a portable power station as well. But I got a LiPo battery, 100 amp hours, and we're going to use a charge controller. And we got some DC outlets, and that's how we're going to transfer power over to our uh, AC200P. It's I uh, started out with just going to do a battery extension DC only, but I got a little crazy and figured why not just go ahead and add the inverter as well. And um, we'll get started doing this and we'll show you progress along the way in the finished product. I want to give you a quick rundown of the layout. We've got our battery up here. We put a piece of wood in the bottom to hold the battery in place. We're going to attach the inverter to the side and we're going to hardwire the inverter to this outlet which we will have an outlet on the side right here. We got our fuse box which is going to be down there and our terminal blocks going up and we're going to use a 100 amp circuit breaker positive going to this side and the other positive going down to the terminal block and then we got our negative right here. It's going to be tight but I think it'll work and then we'll wire our DC circuits and I think we're going to put our outlets if you can see that right there so they'll be coming out right there. And then we got a remote on off switch for our inverter. We're probably going to put it somewhere about right there. And we'll keep you up to date as keep you updated as we continue. But that's looking like how we're going to get it in this box right here. So this is a just a Craftsman toolbox, 26 inches long. And the battery fits in there nicely. It does close up. This is going to be um, attached to the top of the battery um, with some alien tape. It won't go anywhere. And we might have to notch out uh, those ribs in the toolbox. But um, I've checked it a couple times and it does close. But we might notch it out just, just to make sure we can put it pretty much anywhere we want to on this battery so it matches up to the terminal block pretty easily. Quick update where we're at. We've got our fuse box tied into the bus bar positive and negative going to positive and negative. We've got our outlets installed. USB-C and uh, USB uh, 3.0 3 quick charge and then our 12 volt cigarette lighter output. We've got our outlet box installed we're ready to wire the inverter but we're going to wait until we get more of this other wiring done because it'll be easier that way okay show you the progress here we've got the Renogy 100 watt pure sine wave inverter in we have it hardwired the outlets on with the outlet cover still need to wire our DC circuitry and uh, our circuit breaker and battery but uh, that's kind of what it's going to look like it looks like we have pretty good room in there so all right it's a kind of finished product I got a couple things left to do but we have everything wired temporary wired a solar charge controller up to it see it's showing 13.3 volts and we are charging a cell phone right now so that port seems to be working we haven't tested out our AC or the cigarette lighter port but 
we just have this wired to the front for our solar panels coming in and going to our charge controller. Um, I haven't figured out how I want to do the charge controller yet. It's not going to fit in the box, but everything's in there. And it does work. We just need to check a few more things and we'll show you that later on. Okay, here's the finished product. Just take a quick tour of it. First, we just have a simple, very cheap battery uh, capacity. And mainly, I'm just worried about the voltage. I don't know if the gauge is going to be accurate at all, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. I do plan to upgrade that, but I had that, so I just used it mainly so I could see what the voltage was. Then we have our Renogy inverter that we can turn on. Here's where our solar panels will go. Have the input um, coming from the solar panels and this going to the charge controller. On the back we have this is hooked directly to the battery so we can uh, hook that to the charge controller. Coming down here we have power switch for this 12 volt outlet and it's a, just a 12 volt cigarette outlet. There is no switch for this one as we said earlier because it has just a push button on 65 watt power delivery with a quick charge 3.0 USB A and on the side we have our two outlets that are 120 volts and those are hardwired into the uh, Renogy 1000 watt inverter did add a fan to the top put some holes here and here for venting because I have it actually blowing in and this is a way that then we added a couple of holes here for it to escape so if you turn it on it's very quiet I eventually may add a temperature switch in, in lieu of this one but um, again I just had these switches so I'm using them so I can turn it on and off with that when I'm hooked up to the solar panels or excuse me the charge controller I have a temperature um, cord right there that plugs in and tells me what the temperature is on the charge controller this one does too but it gives it in Celsius uh, 19 degrees Celsius and it does have an actual sensor so that goes in and goes into this little cheap battery capacity monitor so wish it was in Fahrenheit but maybe when I ordered it over a year and a half or so ago I should have looked at that but I didn't but again mainly what I'm using this for so I can see the voltage which is 13.6 volts fully charged and I just used the remote to the Renogy so I can turn the inverter on or off out here and again like I say originally it was used as a project for a battery extension using this LifePo 4 battery to add 1280 watts watt hours um, to my AC 200p but when I got going I just went ahead and said well why not make a portable power station out of it and it'll still serve the purpose of extending the AC 200P um, as we will show and uh, it also can charge the other power stations that I have okay so I want to show you how the battery uh, capacity or uh, increasing the battery ca capacity of the AC 200P will work we have the cigarette lighter port plugged in to a meter here going to our 
DC charge enhancer right there. So if I turn the power on, you can see getting about 13.4 volts and waiting for it to kick in. They're transferring about 107 watts through the charge enhancer. And our AC 200P is getting about 104, 107 fluctuating. So I want to show you another way to transfer more of that battery capacity. So we'll get that set up and I'll show it to you. Okay, so by hooking up a 12 volt to 24 volt uh, converter, we can take this 12 volts, bump it up to 24 volts, keep the amperage the same. We're getting 240, or excuse me, 24 volts, but we're getting 237 watts now. So over on our AC200P, you can see we're getting 232 now. So there is a way that you can increase the watts from your cigarette lighter port. Now you can wire this directly to the battery as long as you have it fused. And this is probably a setup I wouldn't use unless I'm home and monitoring just for safety purposes but um, as you can see we are increasing our power the amps is staying right around 10 which is what this outlet is rated for and we're doubling our wattage and that's how you can take this battery a LifePo 4 battery and increase your capacity to your AC 200P by 1,280 watt hours. And again, if you wanted to transfer it slowly, you could just bypass this. You don't need this. It'll just transfer it about 100 watts at a time. Just want you to know that this ports are not regulated. But if we plug in our boost converter, see we are pulling right around 600 watts off our hot plate. Let's turn this back on and watch what happens. Yep, let's make sure it's plugged in. There we go. Because now we're running our step-up converter to stabilize the voltage at 24 volts getting 184 watts in and now we're still charging at 182 so by those ports not being regulated you can see when a voltage drops and on the uh, screen we're down to 12 and a half volts because of such a load that we're pulling now let's see if we can turn this back up to where it was at 300 degrees now we're pulling 812 watts. Here we're getting 24 and 185, and we're charging our EB55 at 182 watts. So, this is a DIY power station, so I'm really regulating the voltage through this. And we're going to turn our fan on. I heard the inverter kick on. So now we're running our fan now too. So yeah, it works great. See the fans running. EB55's fan just kicked on. And if you can see our water, we're boiling water. So if you're going to run these other things, you could even buy one of these that are 12 volt to 12 volt. And what it would do is stabilize your... Um, port which I'm not interested in that this like I say is really just a better expansion but it's nice to know that if I needed it you can see I'm pulling about a thousand watts almost off this power station 181 there 811 there fans pulling a few watts and I'm charging the easy longer and I'm not charging this, I'm actually charging the camera I'm using right now because my battery was going low. 
So there you have it, guys. Turned out to be a battery. Okay. Final thoughts. Like I say, what turned out to be a battery expansion is a full-blown portable power station, but uh, does the job. Like I say, mainly I'll be using it to feed all my other power stations and just dumping power into them. But if I needed it, uh, my wanted to take it on my property over there, I could, no problems. And it works good. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any questions, um, like and subscribe to the videos. I appreciate it. It helps me to grow. Like I say, I'm ever so close to thousand subscribers so subscribe like share and i thank you guys for watching my videos and again leave comments down below and have a blessed day